Hello, everybody, and a very good morning to everybody here. It is such a pleasure to be back in Tromso. Uh, when Oli said he'd got a star involved, I, I wondered who the heck this person was. I thought, my God, I'm not moderating after all. But anyway, it's lovely, Oli, to hear those kind words, and also it's lovely to have you at the very beginning invite and welcome all the friends of the Arctic to Arctic Frontiers 2020. I have to say, I now do feel like a friend of the Arctic. As Ole says, I've uh, had the pleasure and the privilege of, of chairing debate here for four years now, and I keep coming back because I am now thoroughly engaged in the issues that you all face, and I also have fallen a little bit in love with Tromso itself. It's such a pleasure to be here, particularly as they've put it back a week, and now I've actually seen that golden orb, the sun, just for half an hour, but I saw it as I walked down the coast yesterday, and it was magical, and it is such a great thing for me to be back here one more time. Now, we've got uh, a huge amount to get through over the next couple of days where I will be moderating panel discussions and keynote speeches. Uh, we're addressing the big themes that I think have rather wonderfully been laid out by our opening speakers this morning, all of it underpinned by this uh, consistent theme that knowledge is the key, responding in the right way to the knowledge we are building up about what is happening in the Arctic and in the politics that surrounds the Arctic. That is the, the way to find the right solutions for this uh, beautiful part of the world. I, in my day job, as many of you will know, am the presenter of a show called Hard Talk. I spend much of my time trying to make sense of what is happening in geopolitics, in the international community. I spend time, of course, looking inward, because we in London have had our own preoccupations with a little political difficulty with the European Union. But I spend a great deal of time looking at the impact of uh, the Trump administration on international politics, looking at the rise of nationalism and populism, which involves not just elements of, of our own governments in Europe, but involves the United States, of course, but also uh, Russia and China, which are very overtly uh, nationalist in their thinking these days. And how is that going to impact upon the Arctic? And in the background, there is that constant ominous hum of ever-increasing knowledge about climate change and the degree to which it really does mean change, in particular in the far north. Those two themes, geopolitics and the impact, the political impacts of, of climate change are going to be absolutely at the center of our first panel discussion. We call it the state of the Arctic. It's where we kick off every year, and that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to have keynote speeches from four fantastic speech, uh, speakers. We're then going to have a, a panel discussion. We want Arctic Frontiers 2020 to be highly interactive, so I'm going to constantly be scanning the room, looking for indications, whether it's a twitch in the arm or a a little raised eyebrow that people want to engage with questions. We've got roving microphones, so you will get opportunities to express your opinion and ask your question of our panels. We've also got some special uh, speakers in the room who've got input to offer who aren't on the panels, but nonetheless, I'll be turning to them too. So it's going to be a very engaging debate. I will now introduce our first speaker, and we will get on with our consideration of the state of the Arctic 2020. So please join me in giving a very warm welcome to a figure who is very well known to many of you. That is the Minister of Foreign Affairs here in Norway, Ine Eriksson Sørede. Minister, the floor is yours. 